What's up, guys? Welcome to the Wholesale Horror Stories, Episode 3, where you get to hear all the cringy shit that goes on in wholesaling. It's actually, like, kind of freaky sometimes. What's up, Jacob? How you doing? What's going on? Not much, bro. Not much. Hey, I want to get some viewers backstage, and I want to get them to tell us their horse ho horse sale? wholesale horror stories. There you go. There's the link, guys. I popped the link in the chat. So come backstage. Come tell us your wholesale horror stories. I know last time, bro, last time it was like wild, the, the stories that we had. I'm excited to see what we get this time. Heck yeah, dude. The horror Heck stories yeah. are wild. <laughs> bro, I was like... I, I, right before right before the call, I know you mentioned you're like I think I'm running out of wholesale horror stories. It's like we need we need like people to come backstage. We should we should like line them up, or maybe like start a Reddit form or something. Yeah, no, we should. We need to definitely have like a list and uh, get people to just. We need to start scheduling people out. Yeah. 100 percent let's let's say good morning good morning wyatt good morning marcella good morning reggie good morning john i would love to hear your wholesale horror stories so if you got any kind of wholesale horror stories any deals gone bad crazy shit going on come backstage i'm gonna drop the link in the chat come backstage tell us your wholesale horror stories this, bro, this is like a true crime kind of show. Like, dude, one person, one person, he's like, yeah, I just bought this. I, I just wholesaled this property. Um, and I went into it and there was blood in the bathtub and like blood all over the walls and whatnot. It's like, shit, what happened? Like, Somebody blew their brains out. Bro, that shit's fucked up. Yeah. Part of my language, guys. Guys, don't have your kids near you as you watch this wholesale horror stories. It's actually like it's cringy. We got to. Uh, I'm trying to think of some another one that I might maybe have had. Um, hmm. Did I tell the one the where the tenant? Like the the owner had like it took her like three years to evict the tenant. I don't think so, bro. I want to hear it. All right, so we had a deal in DC. This is like it was like a in between of me doing direct to seller and then joining Astro. So this it came from when I was doing direct to seller. So I had called this homeowner, asked her if she wanted to sell her house. She basically said like, "Yep, I'm interested in selling." So. I met her at the property and we're walking through the house um, and she's telling me this story about how she bought the house. And it made absolutely no sense to me, to be honest with you, like made zero sense. So she said, now she's a real estate attorney. So she has some oh, knowledge in real estate, right? Yeah. So she said she bought this house and well, she said she goes to real estate auctions and she really didn't want to buy this house. So she, she, she put a bid in on it though. And then I guess her boyfriend at the time was like, Hey, you need to, you know, put a, a higher bid, you know, someone else is going to pay. I, I don't know what the whole point of putting a higher bid was, but uh -huh. she said she got convinced to put in a higher bid. So she puts a higher bid in and ends up winning this house. And she's like, look, I, I really did not want this house, but I got it. So Ooh. she buys this house. They close on this house from an auction. And there's still a tenant living in the house. Now, she said that this person had been living there basically for free for her whole life. Like, I don't know hey. how that situation got, but she's like, this lady has literally never paid uh, a dollar of rent in her entire life. And so I feel like at that point, you almost own the house. Yeah. And so I think what it was, was it was her house. And I don't think she was a tenant at the time, I think it was her house, but she just wasn't paying anything. And then okay. that's why it ended up at an auction. 
And so I just think she had been, and I think she had been living there with someone else for free. And then I don't know if that person died and she still like had the house. And then I don't know what the case was, but long story short, mm -hmm. she had literally not been paying like a dollar for forever. Right. And appreciate it. Um, and then, um, so she's like, okay, so we buy this house, this person's living in it. She's basically trashed the place. It's not like very trashed, but it's not well kept. Right. I mean, you can only imagine someone who's not paying and going to auction. They're probably not keeping the best care of the house. So she, um, she starts the eviction process. Now in DC, it takes like nine months to evict someone. So she starts this God, eviction damn, process. Bro. Yep. She's going through the <laughs> process, going to the court cases, doing all this, doing all this. The, I want to say her final court case, her final case for the, the house, right? Um, she, I guess the, the tenant at the time or the homeowner, whoever the lady was that was living in it before it got bought, she had one of her friends go into the basement and take pictures all over the basement to make it look like he was living there. And then what bro, he had bro, like, hold on a minute. Hold on. Let's back it up. Let's back it up. So they're going through the eviction process. And then this person literally gets their friend to come stage the basement, make it look like they're living in this dingy ass basement, take a bunch of photos. Why? Why, like bro? a photo of him sitting there with like a book reading in the corner, like <laughs> uh, one <laughs> with him like laying on the bed. Just just like, a photo shoot. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so they take all these photos <laughs> and they, they 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 take it to the court case, the last court case for the eviction. And the lady says, um, like, okay, I'm cool with getting evicted, blah blah blah. But you know, my uncle or whoever she said this dude was was never this informed that he was getting evicted been living in the basement. Yeah. He's been living there the whole time and no one informed him that he had to get out. And they were like, Oh, that makes sense. We'll extend it five months. Bro. So they extended this like nine month trial to get these people out to another like five months because this dude was living in the basement. So did they ever get the money for rent? Like, like, do they? Have, how did no, the they weren't paying a dollar for the whole nine months. They weren't paying a single dollar on the house. Like, well, it's but, like nine plus five, right? Yeah, exactly. Dude. So for the fourteen months or thirteen, yeah, fourteen months, they weren't doing anything, bro. So Damn. then the crazy dude, it gets crazier. So she's going through this process to get these people out. Like a month before that final court case again, COVID hits. Oh, man. Dude, people exploited the crap out of that. Dog. So now she legally can't evict him because of COVID. After 14 months or so of holding this place, she literally could not evict him. So then it goes to like a whole nother, like a year goes by. I'm touching base with her every so often. She's like, I hate this place. Like everyone's, she, she actually got them out of the house, but for whatever reason, she couldn't sell it yet. Like she was still going through a process oh. with the court to be able to sell it. So after like two and a half years, bro, she calls me one day and I answer the phone and she's just crying. Oh my God, I can finally sell it. I can finally <laughs> sell it. Please just send me a contract. I don't care what the price is. <laughs> So we yeah. send her over this contract at 500. Luckily, the person I was working with was an attorney as well. So he was like, let me talk to her. Let me make sure everyone's on the same page. So they put together the contract. You know, she's a real estate attorney. He's an attorney. So they're talking attorney language. Um, long story short, he knew that we were going to get a giant spread on this deal. So he included what's called specific performance in the contract. She was okay with that. At the end of the day, she didn't care. Performance? Yeah, I'll, I'll explain that. Um, <clears throat> she didn't care what happened with the property. She didn't care what we made as long as we were able to get it off of her hands for her. So specific performance is basically saying that if either party is in the position to be able to close on the property, it's, it's mainly with sellers more so than buyers, but it can be with buyers as well. But let's say a, a seller 
has the means to close on the property. So the title is clear. Everything is good on the seller's end. There's no reason they're not signing. If that buyer is also good to go, that buyer can sue that seller for specific performance and actually per like force that seller to sell that property to them. Because per the contract, everything was good to go. So what specific performance is saying is that is if everyone in the transaction is good and someone is refusing to move forward, again, I'm not an attorney, so this is just my understanding, but if everyone is good and, and one party is refusing to move forward and there's no reason for that party to refuse, the other party can sue them for specific performance to have to perform on that specific action of selling that property or buying that property. So again, if the buyer's EMD is up and the seller doesn't want to take that EMD and they're comfortable with the terms and the buyer has the, like they can also sue the buyer for specific performance. It's a lot less likely to happen on the buyer right. side and specific, in general, specific performance is probably not super likely to go through, but they put a clause in there specifically saying that if she was good to close and she refused to, we could sue her and make her sell the property to us. So mm -hmm. we get the property under contract at uh, 500,000 and we send it out to a buyer at, I think we sent it out. Now the people I was working with, I personally don't like their style of wholesaling. It works. It, it works for sure. Oh no, so, the new Western. No, no, no. They, they, um, they do bidding wars though. The people mm -hmm. I was working with, and so we like sent it out at like five fifty, but we got a buyer at six oh five. Oh my god, bro! Damn, so, dude, a sixty-five thousand dollar, a hundred, a hundred and six thousand dollars, split fifty fifty. So that was the biggest deal I've ever done. So. Now it gets crazier. So we sign, we, we, That's somebody's retirement fund, bro. dog, just know it gets freaking crazier. Like so, that hundred thousand dollars, people retire on a hundred thousand dollars. All right, Holy crap. So look, so look, we get, we get this deal where we find the buyer, we assign the deal to the buyer. So now I'm making 53, the, the buyers or the, the person I'm JVing with is making 53. So mm. I'm like, this is like my fifth deal. So I'm like, this is nuts, bro. I'm like, this is crazy. Your fifth or sixth deal. Maybe, let me see, three. Time to I go did put like, down payment on the Ferrari. Yeah, dude. So like, I'm sitting here like, I'm about to move out of my parents' house. Like, I'm finally, like, I'm free, blah, blah, blah. So we, we signed the deal. And then um, on the day of closing, or I want to say the day before, Oh no. The seller got served. What? But the how? Tenant was suing her for illegally evicting her or whatever the case what was. The now, this is the craziest part. This was the eighth time this tenant was suing her or whatever this person was. The eighth okay. time. So, so eight times. Why why is this why why does it matter then if it's the eight time? Obviously, well, this is this bad. is the re this is the only reason we were able to close on this property, right? So look, so remember the person I looped in was an attorney. Yeah. So the buyer was like, Hey, like I'm not trying to close on this. Like it's a pending lawsuit going on, like whatever the case is. So the person I'm JVing with, he steps in and he's like, Hey. I've read the whole entire case docket. Like I know what's going on. I know what's going on. She gave me the summons. Like I've read everything what's happening here. The judge literally told the person who's suing her for the eighth time, the seventh time he sued, he said, there's no grounds for a lawsuit here. If you sue again, I will throw it out immediately basically. And then you will be charged for, um, maliciously like creating lawsuits or whatever the, the actual term for that is. So he created another lawsuit. And so the person I'm JVing with was like confidently telling the buyer, like, Hey, look, the judge is done with this dude. Like this case is not going to go anywhere. Like I will pay for the attorney fees. I will be your attorney. I'll go to court for you. Like we'll fight this. We'll make sure it's good to go. 
So I was like, okay, cool. Um, and then part of the agreement was he was like, Hey, like, you know, do you mind out of the 106,000? So I guess it was 50,000. He was like, do you mind out of the 106,000? If we retain $6,000 for an attorney fee, and then we'll give the 3000 back to you once everything is handled. I never saw that $3,000. I'm not really tripping either way. Um, they did a lot more for me than I could have ever returned for that three grand anyways, but no. we were able to close on. Oh, okay. So then we, once we oh, got no. that handled, right. We got that handled. So then I'm like, okay, so now you got to imagine making fit. This is my emotion roller coaster, right? I'm making 50,000, making 50,000 serve the seller served. I'm like, we're losing 50,000. We're losing <laughs> 50, 000, bro. my heartbeat <laughs> is like racing. So then we get it fixed. We get it fixed. So then it's like, who, okay, we're back. We're making 50 grand again. So then title company calls me and they're like, Hey, we haven't received the wire from the buyer yet. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So now I'm like no. up here again. Now it's like, I'm losing 50 oh. grand. I'm losing 50 grand. And this is like how many days before closing? This is the day of closing, bro. So my heart is literally like, I'm about to have a damn stroke over here. I'm like, Come on, bro. Like y'all are messing and, with and my you've emotions invested right now. so much time and effort into this one. Yeah, bro, bro, two years of follow-up. Like, yes, like two and a half years of follow-up, bro. So holy um, crap. Actually, let me. So most of it was happening on the day of closing, but I think it happened over like two days or three days. Um, where it was mm -hmm. like this this the court case happened and then like the wire didn't go through. So then finally, um, so the, she's like, Hey, the buyer, we're, we're on the phone with the buyer. The buyer said that he sent the wire twice and we still haven't received it. Wait a minute. He I, sent the wire twice. Like because he removed from his account twice or like, yeah, because like they said they never got it. So then he's like, okay, well let me like get my bank to, you know, whatever, like he resent it. So he's like, dude, I've sent the wire twice. Like they still haven't said they've gotten it. So now I'm having like a panic attack. I'm like, dude, what oh, no, is going on? Getting it to the right place. I, dude, I don't know what's happening. So oh. then finally they're like, okay, we got it resolved. Um, you know, we got the wire in. Uh, we're it? good to go. And then I, there was just something with the banks. I don't think the the banks wanted to move that much money around originally. Like, oh. I don't know if it was because he never wired to that specific account. I don't know what the case was. And it was like a $600,000 wire. So it wasn't anything small. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, bro, like it was, it was a roller coaster. Um, and I honestly think, let me see if that deal ever sold. I, the last time I checked, bro, and this was in 2020, the last time I checked, it was still, it still hadn't set, sold. Jeez. So I don't know if so he's like the buyer that was, lawsuit. What his intention was to like flip it, but he couldn't flip it. Yeah. I don't know if he got stuck with that lawsuit or not. Um, Bro, that's wild. Okay, so let's recap. So <laughs> there was a lead that you had direct to seller who was an attorney and they purchased a property at an auction. Lo and behold, there's a person living in the property. And because you're in a land in a tenant friendly state, that tenant literally exploits the system for 14 months, gets 14 months of free rent, and then and then sues the landlord eight times and the judge is like what the fuck are you doing i'm gonna throw this out of court like stop wasting my time um and and that those lawsuits are preventing you from being able to close on the property um because the buyer's getting sketched out and then the buyer's money is like not showing up the title in time for closing holy crap bro and you have like a fifty thousand net to you assignment fee like and you're going on the roller coaster of like maybe i will oh lost it oh i got it oh lost it bro Dude, How so you your sanity. So it was 2021. Um, he bought it in 2021. Mm -hmm. He still hasn't sold it. Now oh, it could it right. could be it could be a conversion where he's like going up and doing a whole bunch to it. But from 2020, from February 24th, 2021 most conversion projects typically take about two years. So unless he's doing like a full blown, like crazy project, bro, like I'm, I feel bad. I hope he's not stuck with that deal because that shit was a nightmare. Damn. <laughs> Damn, bro. 
<laughs> Jordan how says, how much did you pay one to your therapist? Dude, I that I I love. I mean, I don't love stuff like that, but like, it always creates a good story. <laughs> it does. That was a good story, bro. We should clip that at twenty minutes. Make a ticker, clip it, boom, YouTube video. I'm for it, uh, guys. I want to encourage you to come backstage. Come backstage. Um, tell us your horror stories. We want to hear them. I'm gonna put the link in the chat. Don't be scared. From backstage, big horror stories, little horror stories. We just need people to come backstage. <laughs> I wonder if they have. I wonder if I can find a street view to see if he, if they have done any, like started any projects on it or work on it. I'm it? trying to find like a Reddit form for like wholesale horror stories, but they're I'm not finding one. I'm only finding one of like the opposite, where it's like wholesalers being a dick being unethical <laughs> dude so i'm looking at the house november 2022 now they bought it february 21 so november 2022 they haven't even done anything dude pull it up i want to see i'm also about to make a dope video on how to scrape um realtor list for free Ooh, i like those videos dude it's so fire this is the house damn Can this you is like what switch? it looked like in this is what it looked like in 2021 february 2021 and then uh -huh. this is what it looks like in november 2022 looks like absolutely nothing happened wait nothing. a minute were the stairs purple before mm-hmm yeah can you go to google maps that's where i'm on okay in the bottom right i think you can click and like switch the images of like the year of the images see where it says like image date or whatever i know you can too um you can't click on it though interesting yeah, dude, that, that shit's wild, bro. This guy paid 600000 for that. And, uh, bro, the shit people go through, like, it's it's out of this world. Well, let's see what this one went for. Six, seven, eight, 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 eight. Oh, this was never sold. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit Remy and uh and Matthew with the link. I'm gonna tell them come on the come on the show. We need your horror stories. I mean, like there's definitely potential though over there. Like this dude, they just sold this for 1.2. But like, dude, holding it for three years, that's crazy. That is. You know what I love doing on Zillow sometimes? What's that? We're just going to go on a side tangent until we find some horror stories. <laughs> <laughs> I love going to like for sale and then just putting absurd filters on. What? <laughs> putting absurd filters on like $15 million minimum price. And then just seeing what's in the country. What do you think's in Florida? That's 15 million. 187 million. No freaking way. <laughs> Bro, no freaking way. Bro, they manufactured their own island. Dude, I love doing I mean, this. Kind of what, stuff. What, did, did you, what did you do with the property appraisers website? Like, you go to the property appraisers and say, hey, um, we just created this land in the middle of, uh, in the middle of nowhere. Dude, just off of some golf course, they're just like, "Hey, That's wouldn't like that be so cool if the golf cart, the gar the cart path went to our house?" Bro, you know, you know how many kids, bro, you know how many kids you could feed with the money that 
that they spent on building that. Hey, you don't know if those trees right there are for poverty. <laughs> what if they're fruit trees? Bro. But no, I agree. Such a waste of money to just build an island. And then, like, dude, it's not like sea levels are going to rise here in the next five years. So, like, this house is going to be non existent in literally 30 years. Yeah. Like, I feel like if I was rich enough to purchase that island, that would be the worst purchase ever. Like, it's not practical. 187. Like, that's crazy. I wonder what they could Airbnb it out for. <laughs> Look at this castle over here. Damn, one, two, three, four, four stories. See, like, I would not pay. I mean, that's cool, but like, I'm not paying. What is this? Twenty million dollars for this? Like, no offense. This looks like every other beach house in any state. <clears throat> Literally. That's absurd, though. Let's see. Wholesale horror stories. Do I have any? Who's got I, any? I don't want to keep repeating the same stories over and over again. But, like, we run out of wholesale horror stories, so we need people to come backstage and tell us their wholesale horror stories. I know Marcella had some really good ones last week. All right. Yeah, I got to just make a list. Um, we got to start asking more people to come on. Here, let me call. Let me call Danny. Call Danny Harrison. In the meantime, call everyone just watching me do this virtual tour. <laughs> you know how to keep people entertained on a live. Hey, yeah, this is entertaining to me. Although for twenty million, you got to fix this kitchen up, people. What the fuck is this? Not saying it's not nice, but I'm saying a couple million. Your call has been forwarded to voicemail. All right. Oh, no answer. Hmm. What other horror stories? Um. I don't think I've had any like other ones. I mean, we could just we could just do a thirty minute show. This one was a this one was a hoard or a hoarder house. Yeah, yeah. Let me see if I have pictures of the inside. Someone was living in here. Damn. Yeah, but there wasn't really like a lot of backstory on this one. Oh, bro! I came across this property and we almost got the deal done, um, but then it didn't work, um, dude. I think it was like 27 cats and three dogs living in the property. Literally like floor to ceiling with garbage. They didn't pay for two years and they didn't even get foreclosed on. It was, it was so wild. And we almost had it all figured out. But the seller didn't want to give up their pets. And we try to convince the seller, like, hey, look, if you don't give up your pets, you know, eventually they're gonna be they're gonna be displaced. Like you're gonna have to do something with them sooner or later. But because we weren't able to find her, like all all we could get her was like a mobile home that she could live in, right? Um, but her mobile home wasn't big enough for 27 cats and three dogs, and she wasn't ready to depart with her 27 cats and three dogs, so the deal just died. Yeah, it was pretty Lessons. wild. Lessons learned that turned. Uh, what is this one? Well, bro, I think, you know, for our next show, um, I'm going to line up a bunch of people beforehand. Definitely lesson learned because we, we run into wholesale horror stories pretty quick. Um, so I'll line up a bunch of people beforehand. You want to just call it at 30 minutes? Yeah, I'm down. Rather than dragging it out. Yeah, unless anyone else wants to jump on, but yeah. Bet. Well, guys, so, thank you so much. Random thank you so much for being here with us. Um, please 
if you have any friends that have wholesale horror stories and they want to create some content, we'll even create some short form content out of it as well. Um, encourage them to join every single Wednesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have the Wholesale Horror Story Show. So if you got any, bring them. Um, if you have any friends, bring them. Marcella says uh, she's got some for us for next week. So thank you, Marcella. And yeah, you. We'll, we'll line up some people for next week so that we have a full hour long. And then if you're not following me on TikTok already, even though they're about to get rid of it. Yeah, drop. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. They're getting rid of TikTok? In the U.S., unless they figure out this bill. What's, so, what's, unless, what's going on? so unless, um, to my understanding, unless like TikTok sells to a, like unless a U.S. company buys TikTok, like they're going to ban it in the U.S. I mean, TikTok is like crack cocaine for kids. So yeah, I'm kind of so glad that they're getting rid of it. I literally refuse to download TikTok. I'm like, this is such yeah. a trap. I only use it. Like I literally never use it except to post videos. So like I've been posting more like um, my live agent calls. So like here I see in the description, it looks like uh, it's a renovation opportunity. Has a new roof in 2019 and furnace. Uh, so like, and that's like a 10 minute video. And at the yeah. end of the video, I literally break down what I think went well on the call, what I think didn't go right. And then like how I would have changed it up on that call. So if you are a TikTok crackhead, go follow me and watch that video. Drop it in the chat. Drop it in the chat. I don't even know my TikTok. Just look up Jacob oh. Simpson. It's probably the it's probably the real Jacob Simpson. It's probably the same thing. Okay. Go go find the real Jacob Simpson on TikTok before it gets banned. Yeah, not the fake one. The real one. <laughs> All right, guys. Appreciate y'all. And I will see you. Actually, I will see you guys at 1030 for the MLS listings live call. Adios. Peace.